What I want to do now, I want to ask my friend, Dr. West. You all know Dr. West. <laughs> Cornell West is one of the great writers in this country. Uh, he teaches at Harvard now. Uh, and he is also the author of a book, a very profound book, on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called the, was the Radical King? Was that, that was the name of it, yeah. And what I want to do is, this is what I want to ask Dr. West. Dr. West, there was a, a headline in today's uh, Detroit News. And the headline said, Biden sees advantage with Michigan black voters. Okay? And the headline talks about how there's polling that suggests that Biden will do well with black voters in Michigan, in fact, all over the country. I want to ask you this question. In terms, and we heard a lot of this discussion this evening, right now, in terms of what's going on with the African American community, where the wealth gap between whites and blacks is 10 to 1, where unbelievably, I mean, really is unbelievable that in the wealthiest country in the world, one third of African-American kids are living in poverty, where we have a life expectancy for African-Americans that is three and a half years lower than for white families, where we have a situation where black workers today are making about 76 cents on the dollar compared to men, and for women that number is substantially lower, where as Dr. Dooley was talking about, we have four million African Americans who are uninsured, uninsured entirely, and even more underinsured, where black women are three and a half times more likely to die from pregnancy than white women, where we have home ownership gap between black Americans and white Americans today is wider than it was in 1900, where we have an education system. Years ago to Detroit, you got school buildings that are crumbling, you got teachers that are leaving, you got young African Americans leaving school very deeply in debt, and others cannot afford to get a higher education. Now my question to you is, is Dr. West, is do you think that the same old, same old status quo politics, the politics that depends on billionaire campaign funding, the politics that gets support from Wall Street and the insurance companies and the drug companies and the fossil fuel industry, which by the way is also polluting and destroying black neighborhoods, giving kids asthma and outrageously high rates, all right? Dr. West, do you think given the reality of the condition, the African American community right now, that supporting a status quo, same old, same old type of politician is going to address these issues? No, oh, appreciate that question, appreciate that question. Oh, indeed. Indeed, indeed. You asking that kind of profound question, I got to stand up and straighten my back out. Brother Martin used to say, anytime, every day, people straighten their backs up, you're going somewhere because folk can't ride your back unless it's bent. And I'm not allowing nobody to ride my back. Not at all. But I love you, too. <laughs> but you keep in mind, you see, that when you see me, you see in my mama and daddy, you see in my tradition, my community, you see in Dee Dee Bridgewater from this town and the Betty Carter from this town. But you're also seeing some Michael Moore in me because it's just not a skin pigmentation matter. <laughs> skin pigmentation doesn't determine your moral and spiritual formation. You got to decide who you are. And the reason why I'm with this brother, and I've been with this brother, and I will be with this brother, that's why Brother Danny Glover and I came yesterday and had 11 events in various senior citizen sites. That's why I'm going to be with him all the way through, is because we are experiencing a massive moral and spiritual collapse of integrity, honesty, and decency in the country. And I don't care what color you are, I don't care your gender, I don't care your sexual orientation, it is a moral and spiritual crisis.
And this dear brother, my dear brother Bernie Sanders, exemplifies an integrity, honesty, and decency. Do you know how rare that is in the political class when most of them, most of them are up for sale? They're up for sale. They tied to big money in all of its various forms. When they ask what are their deepest moral convictions, they got to ask what the latest poll is saying. You don't have to worry about that with this brother. He's never, ever up for sale. That's who he is. That's the kind of brother he is. Let's just be honest about it. That's right. And, and we're not saying, we're not saying that he's God. We're not saying he's a deity. You know, you say this in the corporate media will say, Oh, he got a little cult of personality. It's clear that Brother West has a deep love for Brother Bernie Sanders. Yes, the love is real, but it's brother to brother. We here to be able to keep him accountable as he provides leadership and vision in a moment in which we're about to lose American democracy. We're about to lose it. And you have to ask inside of your own soul, are you going to sacrifice? Or are you going to turn things around on Tuesday? Yeah. Are you going to commit your life to something bigger than you? This brother comes out the greatest borough in America, namely Brooklyn. <laughs> and there's a rich Jewish tradition that comes out of Brooklyn that tells the young brothers and sisters Part of the genius of Hebrew scripture, whether you were religious or secular, has to do with hesed. It has to do with steadfast love. And justice is what love looks like in public. You are to focus on the orphan, the widow, the motherless, the fatherless, the oppressed, the persecuted, the subjugated, the dominated. That is a moral and spiritual force working through the soul of Bernie Sanders. what it is. It's his mama inside of him. It's his daddy inside of him. It is his intellectual and political commitment and we are at a pivotal moment. That's why he's unprecedented in American history. That's why this campaign and movement is unprecedented. We got three choices. We got a neo-fascist gangster in the White House. And when I talk about gangster, I'm not talking about hatred. I'm not talking about hatred. I'm a Christian. I believe in charitable Christian hatred. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, you hate the sin, but you still try to love the sinner. We hate injustice. We hate exploitation. We hate domination. But we can stay in contact with the humanity of others. That's one reason why Brother Bernie is able to stay in, the, in contact with the humanity of all of those who disagree with him. You see how he began this thing. That's the kind of brother he is. That's what we love about him. But at the same time, he's on fire against what ought to be hated. Injustice, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you are. If it's wrong, if it's oppressive, you have to take a stand. That's why we got to be part of this campaign and this movement. And let us be very clear in terms of our context as it relates to black people. When I say neo-fascism, I mean the rule of big money and big military with a strong man who will scapegoat the most vulnerable so that we cannot come together and confront the most powerful. A disregard of rule of law, a demonizing of the weak and the vulnerable, the exact opposite of Hesed. But then we've got the second choice, which is a neoliberal centrist. Oh, no, we can just boo for the policy. We can boo for the policy. We got to be clear what the choice is. Because the neoliberal centrist is still tied to big money. That's the billionaires that's tied to the brother. They still tied to big military. That's why he can support the invasion and occupation of Iraq and not just support it, brag about it. 
Martin Luther King Jr. said militarism, materialism, racism, and poverty, they're going to suck the very juice out of democracy. So this is a global, this is an international affair because a baby in Ethiopia, in Guatemala, a baby in Argentina, a baby in Flint, a baby in Tel Aviv, a baby in Gaza, a baby in Chile, and a baby in Mississippi have exactly the same value, exactly the same significance. That's what Bernie Sanders understands. That's what he represents at the heart of who he is. When you are neoliberal centrist, you can lip sing fairly well some of the progressive themes every four years. But like Millie Vanilli, we want the real thing. Bernie Sanders is the real thing. We want the real thing. Isn't that true, Sister Nina? We want the real thing. We're not degrading him as a human being. We're talking about the qualitative break because the neo-fascist now in the White House and the neo-liberal who all of a sudden now is coming back to life. Coming back to life. And the catalyst was my own black people. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Oh, I'm so upset. I think about the legacy of Frederick Douglass and Ida B. Wells Barnett. I think about the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. I think about the legacy of Ella Baker. I think about the legacy of A. Philip Randolph. They always said, focus on the least of these. What are you doing for the poor and working classes? There's no other campaign that represents that better than Bernie Sanders. No other one. No other one. Brother Bernie. That's right. So then. But, the quest, but, but then the question becomes, why not the third option? And keep in mind, Brother Bernie's running on a progressive neo-populist platform. He and I are democratic socialists. It's not a democratic socialist platform. It's building on FDR. It's building on Martin Luther King Jr., who also was a Democratic, but he's not running on that. So all the lies about socialism and communism keep track of the moral and spiritual spirit and fire of what Bernie is doing. Don't get caught in the isms. We're talking about the preciousness of poor and working people. But what, my last point is this. When it comes to the chocolate side of the country. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, oh, I got a deep love for my black people. I wouldn't be standing here without black love, without my mom and my daddy in Shiloh Baptist Church and Willie P. Cook, my vacation Bible school teacher. And I say, what has happened? That first black leadership itself has become so open to just money and status rather than bearing witness to a justice that makes them over against the status quo. Black people historically have always been the most progressive community in the history of this nation. 244 years of white supremacist slavery, 100 years of neo-slavery called Jim and Jane Crow. We've been on the cutting edge, but since the 1940s, since, since 40 years ago, all of a sudden we got a wave of black middle class folk who think that somehow their access to opportunities is the measure of black progress rather than precious Janiqua and Jamal on the corner. So they didn't really zero in on the mass incarceration regime. They don't talk about the decrepit school systems in the hood. They don't talk about inadequate housing. They don't talk about not enough jobs with a living wage. They don't talk about the need for Medicare for everybody that's going to disproportionately help black people and brown people and red people. What has happened to our black leadership? Some of them just sold out. Other ones have just given up. And the rest of them, they're so scared. They're so addicted to the familiar. They don't want to step out on the best. They want to settle on the mediocre and the middling. I'm going with the best of America. I'm going with Bernie Sanders. <laughs>
Well, I think Dr. West answered the question.